everybody, welcome back to my channel. This video is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna do a walk around of my 97 Jeep Wrangler TJ. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is start underneath the hood. So underneath the hood of this Jeep is a 4.0 inline six. Uh, this is a pretty standard engine that comes in these Jeep TJs. Uh, the other option is the four cylinder 2.5. Uh, this is the more desired of the two engines. Did just recently install a new battery down here, and then also I put a new starter in about a month or so back. Other than that, um, pretty stock underneath the hood. Uh, this is just a quick disconnect for the winch. All right, speaking of the winch, let's take a look at that next. This is a Smittybilt XRC synthetic winch line. Um, 9,500 pounds. That's more than enough for this Jeep. This Jeep weighs maybe 4,000 pounds total. All right, that winch is mounted to what I believe is a Smitty built bumper. I'm not 100% positive because this is actually one of the things that was on the Jeep when I got it. It was relatively stock. Uh, that was really one of the only aftermarket things on this Jeep. So staying here in the front, uh, we have LED uh, headlights um, and turn signals. Uh, these headlights, I just got them off Amazon. They're actually really bright. Uh, they're actually brighter than my headlights that I have on my JK. This is a hood louver that I also got from Amazon. I think it was like a hundred bucks. Um, so relatively cheap, a little nerve wracking to install just because you have, you have to cut two really big holes in your hood um, and then mount this all up. But it turned out really good and it helps dissipate heat when it's really hot out. Moving along to the side of the vehicle, uh, the entire Jeep's been Raptor lined. This is all Raptor liner. I did paint match it to, uh, it's called Anvil. It's a JK color. It's actually the same color as my JK. So it goes all the way around. Um, and then over here we have, these are Poison Spider Crusher Corners. Uh, basically it's just body armor, you know, so it protects you from, you know, scratches, dents, stuff like that. Uh, LED tail lights back here. This Jeep is sitting on a four inch zone lift. Um, it's just a, it's a relatively cheaper lift. Um, my buddy Chase and I put it on in his garage in about a day. Didn't take too long. Um, also has 33 inch uh, needle mud grappler tires and then those mud grappler tires are sitting on Jeep JL steel wheels. I did get rid of the stock fenders as well front and rear. These are I believe they're Smitty built fenders. Um, these you have to cut into your existing fender and then retrofit these on top and then bolt them in place. Um, so a little nerve wracking putting these on as well because like I said you're cutting into your existing fenders but you just got to start cutting and don't look back. I believe these are Smitty built as well. The rock sliders you see on the side here, these are awesome rock sliders. Uh, they bolt right into the frame. So it bolts right into these areas right here, uh, here as well. And then, so this is barricade. And then also I have a barricade front skid plate which is down here. Um, this is actually off a of JK. Um, we just retrofitted it to fit on my TJ. So sticking with the front of the Jeep here, I'll try to get the camera down in here. So this is a Stonjager uh, kit, um, steering kit. Uh, basically it's a drag link and tie rod. I don't know if you can really see it there. And then I went with a Terraflex steering stabilizer. And then there also is a Rough Country adjustable track bar in there too. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah, it's right there. Also up here is the JKS quick disconnects, which are right here. Moving a little bit further down, I gotta crawl under here. I uh, just did put that uh, Adams drive shaft on. It's a 1310 drive shaft. Uh, it's only been on for a couple weeks. Uh, it's got the front Dana 30. Uh, in that Dana 30, there is an Aussie lunchbox locker in that. Essentially, it only engages when you engage your four-wheel drive. Um, it's a cheap way to get a locker, and it works really well. The rear is the Dana 35, the much-hated Dana 35. Um, and I did put an Aussie True Track limited slip differential in that. Um, it's way better than just having an open diff, um, but it's not a full locker. It works really well. Um, this is a glass pack exhaust that I put on that. I just wanted an exhaust that had a little bit more rumble to it. That is your standard MP231 transfer case. Um, and then this is actually, 
an AW4 transmission. Um, this vehicle originally came with the 32RH transmission. However, that transmission does not have overdrive um, and I wanted this. So we pulled this out of a Cherokee and put it in here. So also while I was down here, I did fail to mention that uh, I did re-gear this Jeep to Yukon 456 gears front and rear. And then I did put chromoly axle shafts in the front and rear as well. Moving to the back side of the Jeep here, this is a Smitty built bumper on the back. Um, I wanted one that got the rear tire off the tailgate just because when you have a bigger tire like this, it starts pulling out at that tailgate and it kind of starts losing its hinges. So this one is directly on the tailgate. Just pull this, pop that up, and then it lifts right off. And then you can just swing that right open. And then the rear tailgate. One of the things I did with this too, let me open this glass. So this is a Tough Stuff security box. Essentially what this is, is if you're running a hard top, uh, I'm sorry, if you're running a soft top and you wanna keep stuff secure, what you can do is put your stuff in the trunk space here, which obviously it's a TJ, there's not a lot of trunk space, but you can go ahead and close your tailgate, lock it, and then no one can really get into this. Because, I mean, you know, I guess they could try, but it's solid on the back side here too. So as long as you have this tailgate locked, no one should be able to get into the lock box here. So going to the interior of the Jeep, pretty standard in here, nothing too special. I did pull all the carpet out. Um, I did Raptor line this entire thing. Uh, these floorboards were shot when I first got the Jeep. So uh, there's a video where I actually cut all the floorboards out. We put all new floorboards in, you know, uh, tacked them in, se sealed them, and then we wrapped or lined the interior of this as well. So now, let me pull this out here. So now, solid floors all throughout. Um, and then obviously your drain hole for water. On the bottom side here too, I had the frame redone as well. Um, so this frame had a lot of rod in it. Um, I had a uh, off-road shop basically put those caps on, uh, which extends from the front there all the way down here. This is all brand new. And then this piece right here, this is all brand new. So the frame of this Jeep is actually very solid. Uh, it's done on both sides. So on the inside here, like I said, nothing too special. Um, aftermarket radio, I basically just plug my phone into it um, and then just run stream music off my phone. Uh, bulletproof uh, mount for your phone. I do have a heads up display here and I got this just because all the gauges on the dash work however the speedometer is off about 10 miles an hour and that's just due to the bigger tires. I just never got it recalibrated. Don't really need it just because the heads up display is spot on with the speed. So standard stuff that a lot of other people do. Grab handles, one on each side. Um, I put heated seats on this thing too which is kind of funny. Um, essentially what I did is I just put those heater pads underneath the neoprene seat covers here. So you just hit these buttons while you're driving. Here, I'll show you. Start it up. So hit that button there, and that turns your heater on. And then after a couple minutes, this thing gets really nice and warm. It's really nice on those cold days like it is today. All right, everybody, I think that just about wraps up the walk around for this Jeep. Uh, I'm gonna head back home. Essentially why I wanted to do this video is the fact that I actually just sold this Jeep. Um, I've had it for five or six years now. It's completely, relatively stock when I bought it. Put a lot of time, effort, money uh, into this vehicle. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I learned a lot um, having this thing and wrenching on it and fixing stuff up. However, it is just time for something new. Um, so it's going to go on to a new owner. Um, I think they're going to be picking it up either later today or tomorrow. And then something new will be coming to our garage. Um, essentially, we didn't have room for this in a new vehicle. So drop down in the comments what you think the new vehicle is going to be. I think a lot of you probably already know, but let me know what you're thinking.